Hey guys, Crazy Dave here. Hey, you know what? I've tasted some cold aged beef, and I'm telling you, it's fabulous. The problem is, $18.99 a pound, a little too much for me. So, Crazy Dave went on a research hunt, and I did a lot of reading about how easy it is to cold age some meat at home. So, guess what? Crazy Dave here is going to try to cold age his own meat. Stay tuned and we'll see how this turns out. So guys, here's the little step of my garage here. You see the slot machine over there on the right hand side and yes, it actually works. It's a classic slot machine and yep, Crazy Dave has a full size Coca-Cola machine. Mm-hmm. And then up here is an extra little tiny uh, refrigerator that I had laying around. So I decided to plug it in. Now right now you'll see that I've got my iGrill Mini over here that is kind of like my extra thermometer because I've got the Tapachu. Well, what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of trying to balance out the thermostat inside of this fridge because when I was reading it, you've got to maintain a constant 38 degrees or you're going to have problems. So if you noticed on the iGrill Mini here, it's going back and forth between the two lights. Well, it's actually reading two probes that I put in there so that way I can kind of make sure that both of them are reading the same temp. And as you can see, they're doing just that. So I'm gonna keep adjusting that thermometer until it reads about 38 degrees. And then I'm gonna make sure that it stays steady before I put the meat inside of it. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so we're still in the pre-stages here before I put the uh, the rib roast in. Now don't worry about that thermometer over here reading wrong, because I just had it open. And what did I do? Well, let's open it up. What I did is I took out one of the shelves here that was right over here. I took that out because I'm concerned about the space between here and this ice unit here. This is actually what part of the freezer. This is what actually keeps it pretty cold in here. Now, what I ended up doing was I went over to my local Walmart and I picked up these wonderful little baker's racks here. They were about like, you know, $2.50 a piece. And I got myself a foil pan here. Now, the foil pan is gonna keep some of the juices. I put this one down here because I was missing this bottom shelf right here. So this is actually for extra support. You can see it's pretty strong. So I got the pan here to catch the juices. I'm gonna add a little bit of some kosher salt here because everything I've read says that to inhibit mold or bacteria growth, you need to put some salt in here. So I'm gonna put some salt in that. And right now I'm just, again, in the pre-stages here. Now this unit here doesn't have a fan and a lot of people said you put a fan, other people says you don't put a fan. Well, I'm not gonna put a fan in this one and we're gonna see what happens. So Crazy Dave here and stay tuned as we continue the journey here on trying to do homemade dry aged beef. Right now we're at two weeks, that's 14 days, into a four week or 28 day dry age cycle on the 10 pound ribeye roast. Well, let me show you what my setup is, okay? So you can look at this. I did a lot of reading, a lot of research, a lot of confusion out there, but the setup that I have seems to be working perfectly. So let me show you what I've got. First thing I did, we got a refrigerator. Now, this one's here from Costco, okay? And if you notice, there's no freezer on it. 
it's actually a full refrigerator here, okay? Let me close this real quick so you can see something. One of the things that I did is I left the little plastic wrap on here and I'm using a Sharpie or you can use a dry erase marker and I'm writing on the door measurements that I do twice a day. And what I do is I write the time or the date, the time and the temperature. Now you'll see two temperatures here. Why is that? Well, I've got my eye grill here and I'm basically running two probes into the unit here. And that's only because I want a general average because not one probe is 100% accurate. Well, what did I also do? Let's look inside. So here I've got a humidity gauge. Humidity isn't something that I'm really worried about. I've been seeing a lot of readings talking about it. Oh, the humidity has to be a certain way. Same thing up here, I've got a little gauge with the humidity right here and the temperature. Now, of course, temperature is going to change because the door is open. I've got another thermometer here. So I, I really wanted to have multiple thermometers so I can kind of get an idea. Way back here in the back is a little tiny fan that I have that is powered by a USB cord and it plugs into this unit. Now, what is this? This unit right here is a UVC unit. Now, what's UVC? Basically, it's an antibacterial light that keeps out the impurities from the meat. Up here, right here, is a foil drip pan that I filled with one box of kosher salt. Right here, you can see this little tray that is a cookie sheet that's coated. And then, of course, my 10-pound untrimmed ribeye roast. And if you zoom in here, like really close, you'll see that the meat looks really super, super good. It's got a really nice bark on here. And I know I'm not going to touch this because my hand could be contaminated right now. We're not going to touch that. We're going to let that sit there. Over here on the door, I have fish filters. There's four of them. These are activated charcoal fish filters that I picked up from my local pet store. And then right here, I did a custom extension cord going into the actual unit because I did not want to cut the door. So we're going to close this back up so it doesn't get too hot in there. And we're going to let it rest. Okay. Remember, two more weeks, so we're halfway into this thing. But please, don't let all the little readings and forms and stuff scare you. I've been working very close to my local butcher shop that has a commercial dry age uh, machine and his temperatures are roughly about 40 to 45. Now I have mine set between 35 and 38 and you can see some of the readings 35, 38 kind of all over the place but you'll see that it doesn't really go above 40 or 41 degrees. A little bit here 41, a little bit of 42 but most of them are between 35 and 38. That is the ideal temperature that you want your meat to kind of chill at. Well, stay tuned, and we're gonna keep going through this dry age project of dry aging some ribeye meat. Crazy Dave here, and I'm out. So, we're at about three weeks now into the dry aging of that ribeye roast, okay? And everything so far is still going perfect. Let me show you what we got. Okay guys, so we still got everything marking over here on the fridge. Now what I did differently now is over here, I've got like three different temperatures and I have the humidity. Why did I do that? Well, when I was over at Home Depot, they had this really cool thermometer right here on sale, pretty cheap. So I picked it up and I said, hey, okay, it doesn't hurt to have extra gauges and meters and everything else just so I can kind of, you know, be protective and controlling. Um, yeah, there's my thermometer, there's one of the hydrometers, there's the uh, barometer uh, machine along with the temperature gauge there and keeps my highs and my lows. Gives me my highs and my lows on my humidity. And then way up here, look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Well, let's close that refrigerator again. But again, three weeks, one week left, and we're gonna find out 
what it looked like. Guess what? It's four weeks, 28 days, until the dry age cycle of that 10 pound ribeye roast. Well, let's open this baby up and take a look. Look at that roast. That is 28 days. It did not rot out. That baby looks amazing. And even so, there's no smell of any type of rotten meat. It still smells nice, crisp, and clean. So that tells me that the charcoal filters are working as well as that really important UVC ultraviolet light. That's really important. And the sea salt is also important. Well, stay tuned as I cut into this and we're going to look at the inside and see how amazing that ribeye roast is and whether or not I recommend that you try this at home. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, so now it's time to remove the ribeye roast. So we're going to come up here. We're going to use this little step tool here and we're going to go out the thermometers now. We don't use these right now. And we're gonna try to grab this roast very carefully. It's very heavy still. And we're wearing gloves because we don't want to disturb the antibacterial property. It's just gonna close that up. And look at that. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut it. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so we took it out of the refrigerator and we have it on the scale over here. And remember, it was about almost 11 pounds. It was like 10 pounds, 8 ounces, somewhere around there. Well, look at the scale here. It's at 10 pounds and 6 ounces. So, honestly, it really did not lose a lot of the moisture that I was expecting it to move. But it's pretty, pretty dry in the outside. I mean, look at that. I can't even put my finger in that thing. So, we're going to go ahead and still cut it open and take so a look at it. So, we're going to start trimming this fat off. Now, this is Crazy Dave's first time trying to trim this ribeye. So, pardon me if I don't do it the right way, but we're just going to start slicing away a little bit of the fat here. Now, we're not throwing this away. When I was doing some reading on this stuff, people have commented that you want to save the fat and use it for soups or gravies or other types of recipes. So, we're just going to sit here and trim this away and just kind of get into the meat. Look at that. That's nice, mushy, and very, very beautiful. So we're just gonna trim off as much as we can so we can get right into the so meat I'm still level. trimming this ribeye roast here of a lot of the fat. But I wanted to point out something. I mean, we have went through this stuff, and I stuck this thing right to my nose, and I'm smelling this, and honestly, it smells like fresh meat. And it's been in that fridge for 29 days. Wow, that's really amazing. So we're still going to trim up this thing here. Now, you notice there's a lot of this fat coming off. And look at that deep redness still. I mean, that's awesome. But I still want to trim off some of that. And we're going to save this for gravy. So we're just going to keep trimming off a lot of this fat here. And eventually, we're going to turn this thing over. And what we're going to do is you'll see that there's different bones here. And we're going to use these as a guide to kind of make the steaks. Stay tuned, and we're gonna slice these down to actual steaks. Okay guys, so now we stood the ribeye on its edge or here, and this is with the edge of the steak, and we're just trimming off this really hard stuff here as much as we can. And I wanna show you something, check this out. Look at that deep color. I mean that, and it's moist, look at that. I can push into it. That is some amazing color right in here. Look at that, the deep, deep red color. Man, now that is some amazing looking steak. But we're just going to keep trimming off a little bit of the, the hard stuff here because you don't want that. But remember, don't throw it away. You want to save that to make some soups or some gravy. So we're just going to trim that off just a little bit. And look at that. Now, I do want to tell you something. This knife, check this out. This knife here is a Craftsman knife that I actually picked up at the thrift store. Check it out, guess how much? It's $3, and this thing is razor sharp, okay? I love this knife. This is like the coolest knife ever. This is definitely a barbecue 
Chef Knife. I, I don't know the actual name of it, but I just know that a lot of the barbecue gurus out there have this style of knife. Pretty cool, isn't it? Well, we're just gonna keep cutting away here. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so right now I use one of these as a guide here. I'm just gonna cut into it, make some mistakes. And this knife is pretty much sliced all the way through. And we're just gonna cut away at this and we might have to actually hit it hard to make a really good steak. And I think I'm just gonna have to pull it away here. No, let's try that, there you go, don't lose that. But this side needs to be trimmed up, but look at that inside. That is a beautiful piece of meat here. Well, I'm gonna keep trimming it away again, and then we're gonna show you the finished product. Okay guys, so this is what I ended up with. Now, I am no butcher by any means, so rant, rave, comment, whatever, about the different sizes on the steaks. Really, I don't care. Uh, practice makes perfect, and I'm sure the first time you cut into a big slab of meat, it probably wasn't even either. So, I'm not worried about the comments. What I'm worried about is the experiment of doing the 28 or 29 day dry aging and if it really is worth your time. But this is a pretty good thick cut here. I think that's pretty good for a ribeye. Uh, here's another really good one of that. That's some really good uh, marbleization on that one. Uh, here's another real thick one. This has actually got some really good super color. This is one of the ends here. Look how dark that is. That'll make some really good flavor. But these other ones are kind of a little bit thinner, but you know, they're kind of somewhat even, not as bad. They might cook really fast here, so I gotta be careful with that. And then over here, I've got the bones. And basically what I'm gonna do with these leftover bones here is I'm gonna smoke them, and Indian Liberty are gonna have some smoked dry age ribeye bones. Now that is gonna be amazing. Maybe I'll post a picture or two of that. Stay tuned. Hey guys, so into the Traeger, we've got the ribeye dog bones over here. And we also got all of the trimmed fat on a tray here that I'm actually gonna go ahead and cold smoke them. And I'm, today I'm using the Lumberjack Hickory Charcoal Blend. So we're just gonna go ahead and let these cold smoke in here and kind of chill out and get really smoky but boy the dogs are gonna love those bones when they're all done hey guys crazy dave here well guess what that 28 day or should say 29 day dry age ribeye roast was amazing it was perfect well guess what i'm at costco and we're gonna up the game to usda choice it's at 7.99 a pound but this one here is boneless and I figured that the last time that I was cutting them up and I had to trim up the fat and the bones and everything else, I lost a lot of weight. So we're gonna do 17.22 pounds of ribeye roast. We're gonna dry age it. And this time we're gonna do 35 days to see how well it goes. I'm also gonna do something different. I've got the steak ager. That is a machine that's supposed to go in your regular refrigerator and do the same thing. So we're gonna do side by side of Crazy Dave's dry age refrigerator versus the steak ager. Stay tuned and the results are coming soon.